Good morning or afternoon today. Well, I'm Hunter Newsy, and my presentation today is going to be over Sandy Scogland. Uh, right here, we have two of her lesser known photos, mainly because I think they're just kind of like weird abstract, but also still really well captured photos. We have Babies at Paradise Pond on the left, and Maybe Babies on the right. Both of these are using, I think she said the same baby sculptures, just painted different that she handcrafted herself and they are all like alabaster and wire that she made them out of and throughout all of these photos every single one of them state obviously you'll notice our, all of her photos are completely staged and she is in like control of everything that happens in it uh, she was born on september 11th 1946 in quincy massachusetts she graduated from smith college in 1968 in between 1968 and 1973, she studied at the Sorbonne and Ecole de Louvre in Paris, as well as the University of Iowa. I'll explain why she was still at the University of Iowa while she was still going to those prestigious art schools in Paris later on in the video. From 1973 to 1976, she was a professor at the University of Hartford and then at Rutgers, and after that she really just did her own independent art studies and galleries. The photo on the right that you see is labeled Picnic on Wine. It was part of her 1970 gallery. And I, I just really enjoyed it because like the conflict between like, the red wine that everybody's like supposed to be sitting on and like having a picnic over, even though they're like, these sharp, like, really easy to break glasses. And it just contrasts with like the nice blue sky and green shrubbery of people that she made. Uh, she, like the reason that she decided to capture what she does and like, what inspired her to start this kind of photography is, uh, well, she said in an interview with some Italian guy whose name I can't ever hope to pronounce, he, that she enjoyed being a spectator of herself, and she has this love for artificial things in the world, but she also has a like, deep-seated love with the natural world, so what she hopes to capture is like, these really extremely artificial shots like photo photographs that are also like deep like seeded into nature and reality and in the artificial that she's creating she wants to really exemplify like these great parts of nature and the main reason she wants to do this is because she believes that without us the natural world would wouldn't have any of this artificial beauty and she believes that the artificial beauty is like a supreme beauty uh her subject matter as you'll notice about this consists of like mainly food and people. Food, she said, it was because it was a language that everybody understands, because everybody eats, everybody enjoys food. Uh, some people enjoy it more so than others, but everybody, like, you at least have to eat, so there's some kind of, like, enjoyment out of doing it. And the reason that she captures food h how she does is that all, like, a lot of the food photography that we see, they try to make food look really good and look, look fantastic, everybody wants to eat it. She tries not to do that. More so is she tries to capture like, food in its natural way. As like you see here on this cocktail party picture, it's really just a bunch of Cheetos just everywhere. And none of them look like really fantastic, but none of them look bad. Like, they look exactly how you imagine Cheetos to be. You know, they're just Cheetos. Uh, like I said earlier, her, photo her medium, her photography isn't really aimed at beauty, but instead at the truth of the ugly and finding beauty within that ugly and not trying to make anything artificially more beautiful than what it is she likes to create these perfect rooms with monochrome sculptures which i i don't think i've sh shown any yet well she besides like little baby ones but in her like late 60s gallery is where she really starts exploring that and there are later more of those pictures later on in this this picture on the right at the shore uh, as you can see has a bunch of like bar like the exact same barbie dolls over a bunch of different french fries and this is supposed to be like how us humans might be able to look to something that doesn't want to eat humans but instead it wants to eat sand it's like it's people laying down and there's like a bunch of french fries so it is the artificial natural flipped entirely so we have the artificial people over the artificial fries in a setting that would be seemingly natural whereas in real life we have you know natural people over natural sand and like this beach uh, she chooses to do a lot of her monochrome sculptures to show the link between ourselves and the natural world. Those animals are what make us realize that we aren't the only conscious beings out there. Her work is meant to show reality as it actually is. It's this constant 
chaotic interchange between different consciousnesses, between the different animals and the different people. And because there's so many different streams of consciousness, she said that there is like just insanely chaotic world out there that it doesn't re ever really get captured. So she tries to do that by making these monochrome sculptures of different animals and it's supposed to be their kind of spirit and their consciousness and how it interacts and interferes with the rest of us. Uh, her historical import importance is she was at a time when color photography was not really deemed as art because in the late 60s, early 70s, it was really, if you were doing art photography, you were in black and white. And she showed how color can really break the boundaries in photography and photographic art and add to it and it be art and not just some kind of, like, basically Instagram pictures, what everybody deemed color photography at the time to be. And obviously she was a female photographer, which even to this day is almost completely unheard of. There's, because people don't want to like, sit down and say that as a female photographer, I guess. I don't really understand how, why female artists aren't really on the forefront of the field, but that's not, I don't, can't break down cultural stigmas for you. Uh, her materials are anything and everything that she can find and get her hands on. So this one, like raking, raking popcorn, is made, focused on popcorn. And the different textures that popcorn can be, the different colors, the different lighting that you can get off of popcorn. But as we've seen, she uses glass, plaster, paper mache, people, be it. Whatever she finds, whatever she deems to be worthy of art, she will use it. There's no hold back in any of her work which I find to be stunningly beautiful because to do that with any kind of object is out of this world. Uh, she said that she uses anything because beauty and color is in all things. She wants to show that beauty and color. So, raining popcorn, the image that we have here on the right, is supposed to be like a study on texture and different variations of light and color off the popcorn kernels. And she was saying in the interview with that Italian guy I was saying earlier, uh, that her favorite part of this shoot was just throwing popcorn all over the place. And honestly, I can't even blame her. That sounds like so much fun. Uh, the movement she's in, so as with many artists, she tries not to really place herself into one certain movement. But if I had to do it for her, or with my you know, uneducated art eyes, I guess you would, I would say she's somewhere kind of close to postmodern, just because she has this really abstract pictures with like, extreme color changes that is something that I always deem to be postmodern, whereas modern art is, like, really, well, contemporary art is less, like, jarring and in-your-face kind of thing. Uh, her turning, like, in the turning points that she had, she said one of the big things that really, like, changed her and helped her develop as an artist was staying at University of Iowa because, like, it made her realize the endless forms, like, fields of corn instilled equanimity inside within her and made her realize how important the mix between artificial and natural is. Like her favorite thing to do during the week was to just go out and watch the sunset fall over these like massive cornfields and she said that realizing what people could do in like raising these huge cornfields and how beautiful it was mixed against this like setting sun this is what inspired her to really capture these like weird takes on people colliding with different natural things. Uh, how I would relate this to class is, it, as you can see throughout all these pictures, it's a bunch of color theory, like how different colors interact with each other, how like different textures are, and what makes you see depth of field. And she likes to really focus on the many contrasts between di like slightly different shades of these colors, and she's not scared to use some absurd, obscene color that you would never see on anything else. Like for our germs are everywhere picture here that we see here. We have the plant, which we would naturally believe to be green because it's a plant, com shaded over entirely blue, whereas the entire built like room that this woman is in is instead the green of the plant. And we have these red germs everywhere that are supposed to be signifying like, the importance of like, how prevalent and where everywhere germs can be. Uh, my thoughts in general is that I absolutely love this photographer. Right? Sandy Skoglund is a huge inspiration of mine because she's not afraid to go like really abstract and kind of weird for her pictures and it works beautifully like the amount of effort that she puts into each set and each image is i would almost say unparalleled because it takes her hours upon hours upon hours to complete each setting and each field of fo for the photo 
and it's something I really aspire to find and emulate in my works. Uh, in this picture, Breathing Glass, it is one of her most famed works. Is She wanted to really show how glass, this solid, steady thing that doesn't bend or break, it just stays, is able to be bent, and how it can or look like it can be bent, and how we are, like, can breathe within and out of it. Some of her other works here are Blue Bulb, Blue Bulb on the top left, which is one of her really, really early works. That's what almost broke, like, broke her into the field of photography, of like photographic art. Uh, on the bottom left, we have another shot from her, one of her 1970 sets, Radioactive Cats. And on the image on the right is, I would like late 60s, is Gathering Paradise. All of these are entirely artificial, besides the people. You know, she hand-built herself. And like, just looking at the different contrasting colors and the movement and the effort put into all this, it really shows her skill as a photographer and her knowledge of color theory. And these all are my sources. And the Italian one, I'm Demetrio Paparoni, is my guess on how to say it, but I also may be mistaken. But that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you.